All right, so um, in this video, I want to talk about something that I've been meaning to touch on for quite some time. And it concerns the topic of what does it mean to set the system aperture in your optical design program. It might be called different things in different lens design programs, but the philosophy is the same. Setting the system aperture, not necessarily the lens aperture, but the system aperture. All right, um, and this is not a this is not a video about how to set it. Uh, to to learn how to set it, you have to um, maybe take a ZMAX course, official ZMAX course, or visit any of those uh, websites that are listed in the description section of this video, which is, for example, Design Optics Fast by Mark Nicholson, excellent site. Um, the ZMAX LLC site, uh, video video channel, YouTube channel or uh, there's Optics Realm by Scott Sparrow and many, many other sites. What I want to do in this video is to highlight the significance of setting the system aperture. Because if you don't set the system aperture right, then uh, you don't have the right model. You virtually cannot do any lens design without, without setting the aperture right. Okay, so to do that, first off, I have a lens here, uh, some kind of double gauss lens that it's just imaging an object at about 500 millimeters away, plus another half an inch or so. I purposely put a dummy surface here. It's a surface that does nothing. It's just there so that I can visualize the rays near the lens. Uh, you can see the lens, I mean, the rays are, are diverging somewhat. Um, I can, of course, add, uh, fletch the rays with um, arrows, but I guess I'll just turn it off for now because it's kind of in the way. And then uh, I have a wavelength setting of monochromatic 550 nanometers uh, field of uh, this is object height at four, negative 45 because I, I want to put the object tip of the object below the optic axis so that I could have rays coming up and making a positive contribution to the top right here about four and a half millimeters. Okay, so if I go to system setup explorer, you can see that I don't know why this happens, but anyway. Um, ray aiming is on. Ray aiming enables the all the rays to trace in such a way that they are aimed right into the aperture stop. Right? Okay, but in terms of the aperture setting, this is where you do it in Optic Studio, this is where you do it. I've got all these choices here. I selected float by stop size. What that means is that uh, ZMAX will, or Optic Studio, will trace rays to diameter or ray volume that will fill the aperture stop that I set inside here. I, I purposely set the aperture stop semi-diameter because in this case I'm supposed to know how large it's supposed to be. Uh, how do you know how do you know how large it's supposed to be? Uh, okay well in cases where the aperture stop is inside or buried in the lens system such as here some in many cases or in some cases um, you may be redesigning a lens that's already existing in your in your company and that lens already has an iris as an aperture you already know what the aperture physical size is so you know it's, it's this size sometimes you don't know that sometimes uh, you are designing a eyepiece for example with a pupil that's outside the lens an aperture stops is to the left of the lens and in this case that's the entrance pupil as well and in that case uh, if you're designing an eyepiece you usually know what the EF effective focal length has to be and the F number has to be and knowing the F number and effective focal length you can calculate the pupil size which is also the stop size and so in this case you would know exactly what the stop size has to be well in an eyepiece usually it's the pupil of the average eye right so anyway um all is fine and dandy right wrong because setting the system aperture the significance of this is this is is another way of asking yourself what reality does this lens model represent in real life? I mean, is this realistic, having uh, beams pass through a lens like this? Uh, in a way, yes, okay. Um, it's a very efficient way of representing a lens because in this case, ZMAX will just trace only the rays that passes through the aperture stop. Those rays that are outside, doesn't matter, right? Uh, yes or no. It doesn't matter when you're designing a lens and in reducing aberrations, but when you're done, you take a moment to pause and look back at the lens and go, well, how realistic is this? It turns out that it's not that realistic because in real life, imagine you're a photographer using a lens and a camera and you're pointing it to a scene. What's the scene doing? It's spitting out light everywhere. It's flooding your camera lens and you with light everywhere. So the more realistic situation, um, not for lens design, but for analyzing uh, straight light, for example, is 
to start off by purposely setting the first surface here as the aperture stop, even though it's not the aperture stop, but I'm purposely going to set it, I almost forgot to do that, uh, see, make surface stop, okay, I'm going to purposely set it as a stop, I'm going to purposely make it big, say, okay, make it really big, put more rays in, and then I get, oh, wow, look at the situation, now I'm flooding the, the lens with rays, and that that is actually what's happening in real life. You're flooding the rays, uh, flooding the lens of rays, and then you see wherever the ray intersects or stops at a surface, you go, oh, that's interesting. Um, the ray stop there, if it's really absorptive, if that surface is really absorptive, right? But in reality, what surface is completely absorptive? Uh, in infrared imaging, it's, it might be, uh, a surface is perfectly absorptive, it's also perfectly emitting. And then, then you get all these narcissist, n narcissist, I almost said the word narcissist, narcissist effects, right? And then you also get straight light, if, if invisible radiation, the surface will, may scatter light. It will go everywhere and it's a, if anywhere a ray strikes, it's a potential source for straight light. Even glass, right? Even glass, even if you've got no dust on glass, is glass perfect? Nope, it's not. Is it really that homogeneous? No, not really. As long as there are density variations, there's some scatter and there's some stray light. So doing this at the end of your lens design exercise will help remind you that in reality, rays strike everywhere. And just imagine, I'm only showing the axial field and the off-axis field, but in between there are many more fields. There's many, many more sources of potential stray light. Okay, so that's one thing I want to show, one example I want to show of the significance of setting aperture. Uh, the other thing is, okay, let's say, for example, uh, I've got, um, uh, okay, like just the on-axis rays, and I'm going to make it, um, say, five rays here, all right? Okay, good. Uh, you notice something, um, when, look at, the, look at the spacing of the rays here, they're, they're even. They're homogeneous, okay? So an optical design program, such as ZMAX, in this case, Optic Studio, will purposely fill the pupil with uniform radiation. Everything's homogeneous, right? But what happens if, if, you are, if you are taking a picture of a, a sheet of paper with something on it, right? Um, everywhere on the sheet of paper is a source of light, and that source of light could be lambertian. It could be an elemental area spitting out Lambertian rays, and, if, and what happens when you've got Lambertian rays? Then the pupil will have a cosine to the fourth power distribution, irradiated distribution. That's not reflected here as well, right? Is it important? Most of the time, it's not that important. But at least this reminds you that in reality, uh, you really have a pupil that's not necessarily filled uniformly. Okay, so the other thing I want to talk about is, uh, the last example is, let's say, for example... I now, um, okay, I now reverse this lens. Okay, look at this, 42. I'm just, I'm just going to do something like this first for now. And then make this uh, 512.5 because it's 512.5 to begin with. And then I'm going to reverse this. And then in the field, negative uh, 4.5, 4.5. And then put this as all fields, and then uh, remove this, and then um, make this the aperture stop, and then show rays all the way from surface zero. And okay, so what do I have now? I have a a reversal lens, and now it's a projection lens, right? It projects something here to a screen. Great. So, have I have I completed my design of projection lens? No, because what happens is okay. Let's add again this thing here. Twelve point five, um, five hundred. Let's take a look at it to surface twelve. Right. Okay. So, um, in theory, you're done, sort of, but not really, because. In a, in a modern projector, or any projector, even a classical projector, chances are whatever you're projecting onto a screen is a transparency. It could be, it could be film, 
uh, a slide, or it could be a LCD display, or it could even be a mirror, like a DND. Actually, it's DLP chip, but you know, everybody knows what DND is. So in this case, it's a mirror. If it's a mirror, then it's not Lambertian. Then these rays are not realistic because this ray is assuming that the central ray, the chief ray, enters right here. But if you have a separate illumination system, like a flashlight shining onto this mirror, it's going to bounce the rays off. And what if your illumination system is such that it's projecting telecentric rays to this mirror? Then you've got a telecentric ray coming out from there. So now you've got to set the system aperture differently. You've got to go right here, system aperture, go to, um, let's give it a numerical aperture. Or let's give it a cone angle because I can't think it is a numerical aperture. I don't know what that is. Um, I mean, sign, I can't take signs of something. So four degrees, half angle. Uh, okay, for, and then what if you've got a telecentric illumination, right? All right, so in this case, it's, in this case, I now have a more realistic representation of my illumination beam coming off the mirror. And guess what? I'm vignetting now, right? So now, our set, uh, the, the beam volume in object space is defined by your illuminator. If your illuminator is the sun shining onto a, onto a large scene, or maybe the sky, it's flooding your lens system with light, then okay, you can fill by sub size and put ray aiming on and that kind of stuff. But if your illuminator is a flashlight or some, some illumination module shining light onto a mirror or transparency, the, the beam volume is defined by that source. And you can, you can no longer uh, uh, do the usual case of assuming that rays will just fill the pupil. In this case, it's not filling the whole pupil, right? Okay, so um, um, that pretty much says everything about... So that, that, that points out the significance of what it means to set a system aperture is, is to have a realistic model. So what, what will this mean if, let's say, you really are designing a projection lens and somebody else is, is designing the illumination? Well, you have to stop what you're doing at first, talk to the mechanical engineer and talk to the illumination designer and say, hey, what kind of beam are you going to spit onto the scene? Oh, you're going to have a beam that defi is defined by numerical aperture, uh, it's going to be telecentric, great. So what you have to do as a lens designer of this projection lens is when you design it in reverse, I mean, from the screen to the display panel, you would have to make sure that your imaging, your projection lens creates a telecentric beam focusing onto this plane. Of course, it's in reverse of this. Okay, so uh, I think my time is up um, because, you know, I only can load up videos less than 15 minutes for YouTube according to the rules right now. And that's, that's what I want to say. Uh, thank you very much.